trying to catch him, trying to adjust. And that's why, that's why the importance of having a, a someone to, to supervise and watch over you, the Vietnamese look down. Right? You, you, when you go into a battle, you need to have someone look down. Right? right? You, know, you know what I mean? You understand what I mean? Right? So, so what's, what's look down in English? I don't know how to explain it in English for these guys. Because only I know the concept of Vietnamese. Because it's a powerful concept. And I... Hmm? And I... No. See, when you engage into a fight, there's like someone who's better than you, who's watching over your progress, like like the coach. Coach, mentor. It's more than a mentor because this guy here actually are watching over you and after, and, and and watching uh, after your interest, so that you don't get into into trouble and guide you. So it's a mentor thing, but also it's more involved than a mentor. It's more than an advisor. It's kind of really. Um... He's fighting with you as well. But he's not, he happens not to be in the ring. What's the Chinese for that? It's your cornerman? Huh? The cornerman? Like in boxing? The guy doesn't fight, but he's like your cornerman. No, no, the coach. The coach is had to try. So will be considered your sure fault, your teacher. Yeah, basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. That's a, that's a, the, the, the good knowing, uh, good knowing advisor concept behind it is, is that very thing. We don't explain it because then you, you guys become so arrogant. <laughs> you know, you're in trouble call, you know, that kind of thing. But this this is why this is why this is a secret in Mahayana. Mahayana is, is not is not cultivating by yourself, it's cultivating under someone. This is where the, the Chinese understand. The Vietnamese don't understand that. This is why the Chinese Dharma superior to the Vietnamese for that reason. Far superior for that reason. You see? You, you, you think you can read books and, and try to understand and research it? You're not getting very far. Whereas if someone said, hey, you know, to give you a nudge or point you to where the, 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 the problem is, that's how you can progress a lot quicker. So it's all in your mindset. The Chinese mindset, which for them, Olivia doesn't have because she's too westernized. Is that? <laughs> the Chinese, the Chinese, like, 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 like the Danny, for example, he's not here. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> the Danny, for example, their tradition is, is they're always looking for a teacher, but he's been doing it wrong. Okay. He's here. Bro. He's here. Okay. We can stop talking about him. <laughs> See, the Western people, they don't understand it yet. The Westerners say, hey, you know, uh, I'm as good as you are, maybe I'm better than you are, I'm going to show you, you know, I'm better. And that's the wrong kind of mindset. Because you're reinventing the wheel constantly. Mm. Remember the sutra explanation? The sutra definition is what? It's permanent. What does it tell you? What's, what, is, what is the clue right there? It doesn't change. When you come back in the, in the 10,000 more kalpas and te- learn the, the Buddha Dharma, it's exactly the same thing again. As it was. In the past, in the future, as it's right, right now. Why do you insist on reinventing the wheel? It's already here. It's there already. You know it already. It's built in you already. And I'm only uncovering it for you. Tough luck. No tough luck. You'll be confused. You'll be going like this. Constantly. Well, you have someone who shows you the way, you go straight. Minimize your, your ways. And this is what the, the Chinese tradition has. Okay? They don't know what it is. They don't know about the, the straight line and the, and, the, and, the, and the oscillations. But they all they all somehow understand. You have to draw in a good no advisor, because traditionally they think that that uh, uh, 
uh, in, in their young generation, in your generation right now, it's like uh, you draw near them, you make an offering, and you get uh, like a big multiplier back until you give one, you get you know, a million back, that kind of thing. So that's the, 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 the Chinese understanding right now. Okay? They keep on going and finding new teachers. And, and that's that the good spirit with like the young man I referred to earlier, what he's been doing it wrong is that is that is that if you do that, there's a flip side to it. The good no advice look at you and say, This guy's not serious. <laughs> so what? They back off, you know, oh, he's not committed, he's not he's not serious about cultivation. Okay. And therefore you still waste time. So it boils down to, to, to plenty of blessings. If you have blessings, you just like in my case, I listen to Master Shane Hall's teaching and all of a sudden I say, This is it, this is for me. It just it rings true. Okay. Anyway, let's get going. Are we? Are we? Uh, let's do a guard request.
多世界多耶，阿赖跋帝三藐三菩提。阿赖跋帝三藐三菩提。南无沙梁多世界多耶，阿赖跋帝三藐三菩提。南无沙梁南无沙梁多世界多耶，阿赖跋帝三藐三菩提。南无沙梁多世界多耶，阿赖跋帝三藐三菩提。无上真真微妙法，百劫万劫难遭遇。我今见闻得受持，愿解。Restore Bodhisattva, Great Master Shrinha, all good no advisors, Amitabha. We are at. The beginning of chapter one that talks about the title here is spiritual penetrations in the palace of the Triyasrimsha heaven. A few things about.、Uh, This heaven here. We go into more detail about the heavens later, as part of、uh, the sutra. But Triya Chimsha Dali Tian Dali Tian is also the heaven of thirty-three, and the central heaven, and then there's、uh, eight heavens on four sides. The king here is the king. The god king there is called Chakra or Indra, Deity or the Dishu, Dishu, and he is the、uh, Christian god.、Uh, the, um, uh, the he resides in the city of Good View.、Uh, that's made of、uh, the seven jewels. It's really exquisitely adorned and. Um, he enjoys tremendous heavenly bliss.、Uh, Chakra is very special because he's very hospitable to the humans, to mankind. He uh, he's uh,、um, very well liked by the humans because he he likes them. He likes to、uh, teach them. He likes to help them. He likes to draw them in. And to and、uh, to become his flock, and therefore、uh, the、uh, chakra is very very powerful in the human realm. Okay, that、uh, shows up in the fact that、uh, there are over a billion、uh, Christians and that kind of thing nowadays.、Uh, the Before you ought to know that this、uh, Christian God here,、uh, before in a prior lifetime,、uh, she was a poor,、uh, she was poor lady, and she ran into a、uh, uh, worn-out temple and saw that the Buddha statues were exposed to the、uh, rain and the sun, and、uh, she brought forth the resolve to. Uh, fix the temple, restore it to its prior splendor, and with a, gr- a group of friends totaling 32, with 32 more friends and relatives, mostly women,、uh, they managed to pull it off. And for their collective efforts,、uh, each of them was reborn 
as a god king for the 33 heavens. And she being the king of the kings and in the central heaven. Okay, that's the nature of the retribution for this particular god. Okay, the difference between this god and the others is that uh, he's Buddhist. He got into trouble, and that's why you, you, you I know some of you like uh, Catholics or Christians may be a little bit shocked about this because, <laughs> because you do, you, you think you, you, you have uh, exclusive, exclusive, exclusive rights to the, the, the secrets of the universe. But actually, you look at the, the Christian or the Catholic teaching, it's so suspiciously close to the, the, the Buddhist teaching. Think about it. They have the Ten Commandments. It's basically an elaboration of the five precepts. Think about it. The five precepts cover all the Ten Commandments. Much more detail. Okay? Ten, ten Commandments, are part of it is for to control the crowds. Okay? But, so, this, this, uh, this guy he became Buddhist because he got into trouble and, and uh, the Buddha helped him. That's why he became a believer. And uh, it turns out when you get, in, in, when I explain more on the, let's say, the Flower Norman Sutra, the, the fact of the matter is that many Buddhist Bodhisattvas and Arhats would go to uh, this heaven to help him out because he's a real good guy. This God is a good God. He's a good God. He's on our side. Okay? So we go over and help him out. Uh, I'll give you an example. It may, it may be shocking to you too, uh, you Catholics and Christians, is that, for example, the last Pope, John Paul II, actually the second ground Bodhisattva. Which one? John Paul II. The, 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 late, the late Pope. The last one. Second round, forty seven. Second round. This is this is this is documented in the Avatamsaka Sutra where, for example, the first round Bodhisattva would become a god king in the four heaven. The four heavenly kings heaven. That's the first heaven. And then the second heaven, which is the Shaka God and the Catholic God here, the second round Bodhisattva would go there to what? To increase your blessing, to plant the blessings. Okay, so the the the, the bodhisattvas and arahants are all over the, the world. They they, they only, only they, don't, they don't only come here or the Western Buddhist pyramid. They go everywhere to help the being. If you have the breath for the mind to do something good, they come and help you without you knowing it. That's why they both decide us. They both they bow to you, <laughs> kiss up to you. <laughs> so you, you're the greatest. <laughs> oh my Lord. <laughs> and so on. But, but part of that is the plan of blessings. Okay? Heaven means natural. Okay? Natural, these heavens manifest naturally as a result of their karmic blessings, their karmic retributions. You do good, like this, chap, this uh, Christian God here, their dharma, if you follow the dharma, there's certain, uh, we'll go into that later, we we'll explain actually which part of their dharma enables them to be born there. It will be documented later, i explain that later. Basically, their dharma is to do good, and therefore, Therefore, when you do good, you, you create blessings, heavenly blessings. And these heavens then naturally manifest for you to go there to enjoy your blessings. Make sense? It's all in the realm of cause and effect. You do good, eventually you accrue those heavenly blessings, and eventually you get to enjoy them. Okay? In terms of spiritual penetrations, the um, 
the Chinese I Ching, the Book of Change, notes that yin and yang not measured is called spiritual. Spiritual is beyond yin and yang. So far so good? Can't see it. That's why it's called spiritual. Okay? Still and not moving, respond in accord with is to penetrate. Okay? Um, there are six kinds of spiritual penetration. Six general kinds. Okay? Okay. Uh, there are the... You have the first one, heavenly eye, heavenly ear, penetration of others' thoughts, knowledge of past lives, uh, spiritual fulfillment, meaning that, uh, that uh, 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 also known as as you wish, and number six is extinction of outflows. Got that? Heavenly eye. Meaning you can see in the heavens, can see down into the lower realms. You can see the yin. Okay? Um, heavenly ear, you can hear what's going on in the, in, the, in the heavenly realms. For example, in the heavens, the music there is superb. So a lot of our music comes from them. Is it really a copy of them? Okay. Uh, penetration of others' thoughts. You uh, you uh, you can read people's minds. <laughs> Scary thought. <laughs> what goes on in your mind? If people know about it. They say, "Oh, yuck." <laughs> <laughs> um, knowledge of past lives. Uh, <coughs> someone asked me about uh, about that. Is that uh, uh, don't pass lives. Whatever you do is recorded into your eighth consciousness. Every single action you make is recorded. So don't think you're the only one who knows. If it's there, it's in the in the hard drive. Anyone can access it. Okay? So don't think you're so superior. You're so pure. You're so perfect. Okay? Because you know all about your imperfections. Don't think you can outsmart people. You just don't say anything. <laughs> okay? Any problem with that? And number six is, oh, number five, spiritual fulfillment is as you wish. The bodhisattvas, they want to make an offering to the Buddhas, okay? They want an offering of something most exquisite, the most expensive. They think about it, it appears in their palm of hands and they offer it to the Buddhas so they don't have to carry it around. Okay? That's as you wish. Some of you have a form as you wish spiritual penetration already. I'm not going to point it out to you. Okay. But you have it. You too have it. It's a wide range. In terms of spiritual penetrations, there's a wide range. For example, heavenly eye. You can see from 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 different from different ranges depending on your kung fu level. So that's why when when when, when we train you, okay? Build stress and spiritual penetrations because people get get caught up in that. It's never a, an end result in Mahayana. Ever. Okay? Because people get uh, get get uh, attached to those things. And they get stuck. Any problems?
So how many of you have spiritual penetration? Because you want you want to ask me that anyway. I know you know you asking and you you really are not really asking spiritual penetration, right? Um, basically, when you the reason that our our spiritual penetrations are not stable is because our sense organs are not purified yet. When it's pure, you got it. When they become impure, you lose it. I told you about the story of the Indian immortal, the Rishi, who cultivated in the mountains for kalpas for years and years and thousands of years. As a result, he can he can, he can ride on the cloud and fly. Okay. Um, and uh, he he uh, he would uh, uh, go to the palace upon the king's invitation to receive offering because the king was very impressed with his spiritual penetration. So so he would go to the king's palace uh, regularly, like once a month. One, once uh, the king was busy, and therefore he left instruction for his sixteen-year-old princess, his sixteen-year-old daughter, to. Uh, host the uh, the the uh, the uh, visiting uh, rishi, the uh, visiting immortal, and and you know when you're a princess, this princess happened to be really really beautiful, and being in India, she, her skin is is white, not dark, so e e even more attractive, and she would wait at uh, at. The palace and the, the immortal would then uh, fly over and then descend from the clouds to enter the palace. And she was there waiting, and as soon as she saw him, she bowed to him and opened her, her hands. Okay? okay, this is like we do, that's from the Indian tradition. And the Rishi would then would step into her hands as a gesture, say, I, I accept your, your, your respect. I accept your offering. So he would step barefooted into her hands, in the, the palm of her hands. And this lady, remember, this guy here has been cultivating in, in the, uh, in the uh, boonies, in the mountains, uh, in the wilderness for, for a long, long time. It's been a while since he saw such an exquisitely looking lady, white and beautiful, and her skin, when he stepped into her hand, is so soft. And guess what happened? He has this thought of sexual desire arising in his mind. So what happened? His six sense organs became impure. They've been pure all these thousands of years. For that one instant, when he touched them, he couldn't, he couldn't help himself. He lost all his spiritual penetration. See? That's what happens when you go for spiritual penetration. We, Mahayana, right, Brian, we don't shoot for spiritual penetration because we know that until we end our sexual desire, it ain't going to be around very long. <laughs> so far, so good. See, we don't waste our time. What? Wondering about what? Whether it was on the recording. Ah, okay. You're Any questions? So, in this particular uh, uh, chapter here, the Buddha has, of course, uh, many sorts of spiritual penetrations. And in this particular chapter, he, he uses uh, uh, them to emit uh, uh, countless rays of light and sounds and so on. Okay? Chapter 1. Thus I have heard, at one time the Buddha dwelt in the Traya Strimsha heaven, speaking drama for his mother. At that time, an indescribable number of Buddhas, as well as great Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, from limitless worlds in the ten directions, all assembled together to praise Shakyamuni Buddha's ability to manifest the power of indescribably great wisdom and spiritual penetration in the evil world of the five abilities, 
as well as its ability to regulate and subdue obstinate living beings so that they might come to know the dharmas of suffering and bliss. Each of these send his attendants to greet the world on at one. Okay. Probably a bit longer if I were to translate it again. Probably change it so that it uh, long, uh, shorter sentences because my attention span is pretty short. I can't. It's, it's shorter in the book. Is it shorter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe I should take a book. You want the book? No, no. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> Too late now. Okay. I'm committed. Okay. To my mistakes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thus I have heard all Buddhist sutras begin with this. This is what the Buddha decided. This is to contrast the Buddhist sutras versus the existing at the time in India, the externalist sutras, which begin with either er or o. Er meaning existence, no, non-existence, and o meaning existence. Because at the time, the externalists believe that either there's nothing or there's everything. Existence or non-existence, emptiness or existence. Okay? So they say it's either or. Okay? And the Buddha says, nah, you guys are wrong. And that's why he started, he, he said, all my sutras will begin with thus at earth. Another reason for it is to resolve the Dharma Assembly doubts. What happens is that um, Vengo Ananda, after assembling uh, the, 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 the uh, sutras, he would get on the Dharma seat and speak Dharma or recite the sutras to the assembly. And Ananda is... Uh, he looks almost like the Buddha, very handsome. He has all the, the uh, hallmarks, the 32 hallmarks of the great man. And therefore, when the assembly saw Ananda sitting in the Dharma seat, they have doubts. Like, maybe Shakyamuni Buddha have a resurrec- resurrection. Okay, maybe he came back to life. Or some of them thought that Another Buddha came to speak Dharma, or Nanda maybe became a Buddha. So, those that have heard, basically he says, I, Ananda, have heard this from the Buddha's mouth. So, this is not my Dharma. This is not another Buddha's Dharma. This is Shakyamuni Buddha's Dharma. Okay? And that's how to end the, the, uh, all the, the, uh, the, uh, the debates and the doubts of the, of, of the ascent. Okay? So far so good? This sutra here, then, so let's have first is to stamp, put a stamp of approval. This is a Buddhist sutra spoken by, Shakyam, Shak, by the Buddha. Okay? And then the next thing that you, when you listen to the sutras, is that you have to see the six realizations. Uh, the first one is faith. Okay? See. Meaning thus. Thus, we notes that this is uh, this is the Dharma of Mahayana. The Dharma of stillness. The Dharma of emptiness. And for you to be able to understand this Dharma, you have to have bring forth a mind of faith. Okay? Because only through faith can you enter the Dharma. Think about our own myopia, my own our own pettiness. We only see the world and justify the world as we understand based on our understanding, based on our our ability to understand. And there's so much more that we can perceive and we we can understand, right? Okay? So 
that's why we go to school, we go to college, we go to universities because we want to expand that, that understanding, that the domain. It turns out that Mahayana is even broader than that. Okay? And you have the only way for you to enter it is through faith. You have to believe that. And then through that faith, you cross your legs and you will understand it. You will see it for yourself. That's where faith comes in. Okay? There is also, I have heard, meaning, there's a hearer. Someone heard this sutra. Okay? There's a time where at one time, at one time is, in, is indefinite, meaning that it's not, uh, it's not uh, uh, finite. It is at the time that um, that uh, the conditions mature and therefore the principles then become obvious. Okay? Because until the conditions mature at that time, if you speak the Dharma, if you speak Dharma before the conditions mature, they can hear it, but they cannot understand it. Okay? So the timing is very important. There is a, a uh, the host, the Dharma host, he is the Buddha, and it's a place, Trayastimsha heaven is the place where where this assembly occurred. Audience, you need a, a need a, the the um, the the people who commit the act of hearing. Okay, the audience here is his mother and the bhikshus who accompany the Buddha. Typically, the Buddha speaks Dharma in the human realm. He rarely would go to the heavens to speak Dharma at all. The first time he spoke Dharma in the heavens is, is when he spoke the, the ten dwellings uh, in the Avatamsaka Avatamsuka, Sutra. And this, the second time is when he spoke this, uh, this first or Bodhisattva Sutra. Uh, for his mother because he was about to enter Nirvana and he realizes that he'd been teaching uh, the rest of the world but he hasn't taught his mother yet so he decided that he would bring his uh, pupils to the heavens where Lady Maya his mother who passed away seven days after after the the, uh, the birth after she gave birth to the Buddha, uh, after seven days she passed away. He be nghe tiếng tiếng Việt cái là tiếng Việt. Ok. Muốn 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 nghe thì ngồi nghe tôi giảng tiếng Việt. Còn nếu không thì tôi giảng tiếng Anh. Ok. À, cái đây là cái, cái, cái truyền thống của thầy uh, tiên hóa của tôi là uh, sẽ thông dịch ra cho quý vị uh, ngôn ngữ quý vị hiểu được. Em là tùy tùy cái gì. Um, so he went to uh, to to the to the heaven, the Dali, the uh, the Triastimsha, the heaven of the thirty three, to speak Dharma. He said to his, his mother and stayed there for three months during the summer retreat. This is the nature of uh, the conditions for the Buddha to to um, to speak his Dharma. All right. So with these six realiz- realizations. He, uh, this is a, to certify that the Buddha was truly spoken by the Buddha. This is a truly Mahayana. This is truly a Buddhist Sutra. Let me elaborate a little bit more on the at one time. At the time he wishes to speak on the concept of filial piety, filiality. Uh, at the time when he wishes to correct the wrong views of living beings, okay, especially externalists who dharmas uh, uh, lack uh, the past, the present, and the future. Their dharma is only in one lifetime. Uh, the time of planting seeds. Uh, this is a good time if the, the Buddha feels that 
uh, he should speak Dharma so that the living beings can uh, have the chance to plant um, blessings that they can use in the future. Uh, at the time of a true teacher, I think we touched on that uh, earlier when I was gabbing before we started the lecture. Um, a true teacher refers to the proper, the proper teacher, the proper teaching, and the proper uh, studies. Okay, that's what a true teacher represents and bring with you. So the way it works is that one starts with the earnest desire to learn. You don't have that desire. No one's going to teach you. Okay? The Bodhisattvas and the Buddhas are not in the business of forcing themselves on you. You have to request for the teaching. That's why we do a Dharma request before we explain Dharma. Okay? And once you have, when, once the, you have that earnest, you prove you have the earnest desire to study and cultivate, then you need to find a good knowledge advisor to increase your chances of success. And this is where the Chinese understand how to study and cultivate, and where the Vietnamese fail to understand. Okay? And that's why Comparatively speaking, the the number of people who have who are accomplished is usually more Chinese than Vietnamese. There's still Vietnamese people who are accomplished. Okay? But that's because of special, very special circumstances. The Chinese have the Dharma where they go and seek good known advisors. Even that Dharma, as I referred to earlier, is even losing its meaning right now because they don't know how to seek a good known advisor anymore. They only seek it to plant the blessings, not to study and cultivate. And once you see a good known advisor, you don't know how to approach it or, 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 um, or convince that, that good known advisor that they for real. Like, anyway. So, and finally, at, at one time is when it's appropriate, when the, when the, it's appropriate to speak Dharma, and so when the people want to listen to it, okay. An indescribable uh, number of Buddhas, as, as well as great Bodhisattvas, the Mahasattvas from limitless worlds in the ten directions, okay? The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are basically the proper retribution. You get your body, you're born, you become, you cultivate, and you become a Bodhisattva, a Mahasattva is called the proper retribution, or Chenba, Chenba. From limitless world of the ten directions, meaning that's the dependent retribution. That's where you live. That's where your body resides. Okay? Iba. Uh, Iba. And the indescribable number of Buddhas. Okay. The thing here about the Buddhas is that all Buddhas are one of the one and the same substance. They manifest as Shakyamuni Buddha or Amitabha Buddha or Medicine Master Buddha. Okay. Those are manifestations of the Buddha, but the Dharma body is one of the same. Okay, the Buddha has three bodies. Uh, the, that that the, the 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 Dharma bodies when when we refer to the the Buddha having the same substance, we refer to the fact that they all share the same Dharma body. What is the Dharma body? It's everything. It's the only one of them to have the same. Which is, what's everything? True emptiness. Does it make sense? You know, all these concepts really interconnect for that reason. Okay? Worlds! 
There are two kinds. War refers to intersection of time and space, right? And the two kinds of worlds, sentient worlds, meaning living beings, which is the proper retribution, in sentient world meaning the dependent retribution, or the uh, mountains, the rivers, and, 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 and so what you have. Okay. Shakyamuni Buddha. Shak, shak, Shakya, which is the last name, means capable of hum- humaneness. Okay. Refers to the fact that uh, he wants to cross all living beings. Muni means still and silent. Okay. Meaning, this refers to his samadhi power. He's still and unmoving, and yet he can respond to all living beings. We Buddhists can okay, take Shakyamuni Buddha as, as our teacher. I'm not the teacher, by the way. I'm only a certifier. We we all share the same teacher, which is Shakyamuni Buddha. Okay, that's very important for you to make the distinction. Okay, Buddha is Sanskrit for enlightened one. Okay, enlightenment has three kinds. First of all, there is something called inherent enlightenment. What is inherent enlightenment? It says Ganban. Kanban. The inherent enlightenment refers to the fact that we living beings are endowed with the Buddha nature. We are replete with the Buddha nature, meaning that we have everything already. We are of the same substance as a Buddha. Okay? And then, initial enlightenment refers to the fact that even though we inherently are endowed with all the Buddha nature, but that Buddha nature is covered up. Therefore, we are confused. So, inherent enlightenment really means we are confused. It's the flip side of, of, uh, of that, that uh, definition. Inherent, inherent meaning, yes, you have, you are, uh, yes, Buddha nature, but I'm sorry, you, but you happen to be confused right now because you can't see it, you can't access it. Okay? You inherently have it already. You just don't know how to use it. This is a very important distinction, folks, because what it means is that Cultivation is what? It's uncovered. It's nothing new. Got that, Ken? See, if you feel that you have to invent the wheel, then you're wrong on the wrong track. Because you have it already. All you have to do is to figure out a way to uncover what you have. Okay. See, the world thing, the world is thinking is that. I want to invent a wheel and invent something new and make a fortune and contribute to the world. No. The world is already confused. All we have to do is stop the confusion. That's it. Because underneath the confusion, we have everything already. That's what, why we need to understand about inherent enlightenment. And then, initial enlightenment refers to the fact that even though you're confused, you encounter the Buddha Dharma and then you say, wow, there's something in there for me. I kind of like it. Okay? You, so you begin to cultivate and you begin to understand the principles that's called initial enlightenment. Okay? You begin to see the light. You begin to uncover. And whatever you uncover is pretty significant. It's called initial enlightenment. And ultimately, when you uncover everything, you become a Buddha. You're back to square one. 
That's what enlightenment is about. Questions? And upon enlightenment, Shakyamuni Buddha himself says, strange indeed, strange indeed, strange indeed. All living beings have thus come to once and knowledge and view and kept from actualizing it because only because of their attachments and false thinking. Questions? The text refers to the five turbidities. What is turbid? Turbid is defined in the Buddhist sutras, namely the Sharanama Sutra, as you take clear water and you throw mud into it. When mud dissolves in the water, the water becomes turbid. That's what turbidity is about. Supposedly, the water is clear. You add impurities into it, you make it turbid. That's our nature. And the turbidities have five kinds. Kalpa turbidity, Kalpa refers to time. View turbidity refers to your views. Affliction turbidity refers to your emotion, your afflictions. Living being turbidity refers to the fact you have, you have an, an existence as a man or a woman or an animal. Okay, that's called living being. And life ability meaning that it has a lifespan. Any questions about turbidities? Would you like to know more or shall we skip it? The view, welcome, the view. Ah, I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> view turbidity. I skip it right now. Actually, I start out as Kalpa turbidity, but I, I, I let me jump to the second, to the fifth first, and I go back first because the first depends on the other four. View turbidity refers to the fact that your views are improper, your views are stupid, the way you look at things is inaccurate. What you think you know is not. Mm. <laughs> Figures. Okay? Why is that? Because of the existence of the five quick servants. Quick servants are number one, body view. Number two, extreme view. Number three, view grasping views. View grasping at views. Number four, precept grasping views. Number five, median views. Because of these types of views, that makes your views turbid. Okay? What is it? Body view. You believe that there is something called a body. Your body that you bathe, you shower, you feed, you clothe, you pamper. You take it for real. Is it too much for it right after lunch? <laughs> You can't take it, I skip it, okay? I'm not, I'm not attached to giving you everything all at once. I come back to this. Is it too much, Ken? No. <laughs> of course not. I can take it. So, we have this false belief that there's a body here that is us. We are our body. Okay? Eh. <laughs> You're in trouble right away. Okay? Right off the bat. Forget it. You're wrong. Okay? I'm not explaining to you right now, but just eventually, in time, you understand it's wrong. Okay? Number two, extreme views. Meaning that either the extreme views back then in, in India is that they either annihil annihilation or permanence. You, you're a dog, you're a dog forever, and then you're a man forever. You never change. 
Oh, and I, and I think is that like a lot of these smart modern day people, like especially the executive, they said, after you die, you return to dust anyway. So it doesn't matter. Go ahead and enjoy life. It doesn't matter. Okay? They don't believe in reincarnation. They don't believe in, 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 in things like that, like silly things like cause and effect, reincarnation. So they, it's called annihilation. When you die, you disappear. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and enjoy life. Go ahead and create offenses. Go ahead and steal and rob. Hmm. Because as long as you can get away with it, everyone else is doing it. Why not? The Wall Street people are doing it. They've been doing it for, for, for several years now. Many, many of them have, have retired rich, filthy rich. So why not? Why not you? Why not me? Huh? Seize it while you still can. View grasping at views. It refers to the fact that um, they take the mistake, uh, the, the, the effect. Because something is not effect for an effect. What is this? What is it exactly? The fact of the matter is that uh, they think that, that uh, like the unlearned bhikshu, you hear that a lot. This is a very common uh, reference in, in uh, Mahayana circles. The unlearned bhikshu who thought, who, who was certified to fourth stage, fourth dhyana, and he thought of himself. He reached fourth dhyana, like some of you, and thought of himself as having reached the fourth stage Abha, meaning he has ended birth to death. So by, by the time he dies, he saw his consciousness, consciousness leaving his body, and he gave rise to the thought, wait a minute, I still have a death. Therefore, the, Ad, the Buddha lied to me, because the Ahad still have birth to death. He's only a fourth dhyana god, and he thought he is a fourth stage Ahad. Therefore, he 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 um, he slandered the Buddha Dharma and said, "You got you lied to me." Okay, and that's what this refers to: view grasping at views. What he thought, he thought himself fourth dhyana as fourth stage aha. Okay, that's a wrong that's a wrong um, retribution that he mis mistook for himself. Too arrogant. Precept grasping views. It refers to the fact that yeah, back then the people who opened the heavenly eyes, we, I talked about that earlier, and they saw a dog die and then be reborn in the heavens. And that smart aleck, that guy thought, wow, then after the, the dogs die, they're reborn in the heavens. Maybe all we have to do is, is observe the precepts of the dogs. And then we can be reborn in the heavens. So they, uh, they, uh, they sleep like a dog, they eat like a dog, meaning everything the dogs like, they like. And that's what this represents, precept grasping views. So they observe all these, uh, these extreme precepts, thinking that they are ultimate, they bring them ultimate liberation. Wrong views. Number five, deviant views. Deviant views is basically what's a deviant view? Anyone? What's deviant? I I refer to proper dharma this morning. What is what is what is deviant? Deviant is just the opposite of proper. What is it? Improper. Deviant in Mahayana is defined as not believing in cause and effect. These folks are in big trouble. Not only do they not believe in deviant views, they also they go around and tell people that no such a thing as cause and effect. It doesn't matter. Go for it. Cheat, steal, lie. Gone people. 
as long as they don't know what harm is there. As long as you get away with it, why not? So it's no cause and effect. It's okay to create offenses because it doesn't matter. Let's be here, please. Okay? So, mutability takes the five quick servants, the five views here as substance, as its basic substance, and mistaking wisdom as mark. And the thing is, pretty, pretty smart. Okay? We, they, we call it servants of Shu, of Shu, because they create offenses, and if you create offenses, you will have to pay for it. You have to undergo retribution. Retribution here is you are subject to birth and death. You come back and pay for it. You evolve, you keep on coming back and pay for it until you pay it off before you free your debt. That's what retribution is about. Okay? And because of these, these, these uh, incorrect viewpoints, incorrect knowledge and views, they've taken the genuine extre uh, doctrine to extremes. They, they uh, are so far off target. It is so pitiful. Affliction turbidity takes the five dull servants as basic substance. Basically, the five Dull servants. If you want to keep on going over this because it's many, many, many multi layer. Okay. First of all, the first servant is, is greed, second is hatred, stupidity, arrogance, and doubt. Okay. Greed refers to the fact that we don't have enough, we don't feel that we have enough. No matter how much you have, it's still not enough. You need more money. You need more love. You need more attention. You need more clothes. You need more cars. You need a bigger house. You're never happy. You're never satisfied. Hatred, the anger that rises in you. Okay. You, you cannot be patient. You. The, 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 the thing here is that people don't realize that the one thought of hatred opens the door to the 80,000 obstructions. You indulge in hatred and anger, you're obstructing yourself. Think about it. Think about your own experience. You get what you want when you're angry? Sometimes. <laughs> but not what you think you want. Stupidity. Stupidity uh, refers to the fact that uh, that many kind of stupidity simply here uh, that's uh, look define it as you cannot understand and analyze. You cannot understand that all dharmas are impermanent, ultimately empty. You attach to things. You can't let go. Arrogance. You think you're superior to a living being. You cannot be humble. You cannot understand that all living beings are intrinsically the same at the same Buddha nature. And yet, you learn something, you got something, you feel, you feel so superior. Okay? The fifth one is doubt. When you, when you encounter something good, something proper, the right principles, you just can't get to bring yourself to believe it. Why? Because who would, uh, it would, uh, um, Destroy your world. You can, you you um, you um, you um, 
you simply you simply cannot cannot uh, believe that uh, that uh, is there's something else beyond your realm. Just like this this is this uh, this brings to mind uh, the mindset of the scientific people. They think they know everything. They think they think they must be able to put a finger on an explanation before they can believe it. That's that's uh, uh, they, 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 they they tend to doubt everything else, anything else that they they, they, they don't understand. Funny that there's a one person that, that comes to mind right away and calls himself a, time, a scientist. Um, uh, these are basically basically thought illusions. These these uh, ero- they're, 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 these thoughts are uh, misleading you. And uh, the the nature of this stability is that you are irritated, you are afflicted. Okay. Living being stability. You become a living being. You you are born because of three conditions: your mother, your father, and your own karma. That's what makes. That's what creates living being. And because of the nature of the stability, the the the, uh, the manifestation of the stability is that you constantly are revolving the womb. Okay. You, you you born and die, you born and die continually. You go through the cycles of being born, creating offenses, dying, and coming back to go undergo the retributions. Unceasingly, it doesn't stop. Since beginning of this time, we've been revolving in a way, and we'll continue to do so until you find a way to escape from it. Okay? Living beings are the, the culmination of the five kinds of things, the five skandhas. Skanda is a scarce sanskrit for heaps, or piling up. Okay, all these five skandhas are the, are what gives us the false belief, the false substance of living beings. They are form, feeling, thought, formation, and consciousness. This is what defines you as a human. You think of yourself as a person. A human because of a form of skanda. You touch yourself, there's a body. Form has a connotation of solidity and impediment. It obstructs the light. It obstructs. Okay? Therefore, it must be real. It must be there. Form. Is your first level of confusion. Too much? Feeling. Feeling refers to the fact that you are able through your sense organs to receive data from the outside. Therefore, the outside must be real. Therefore, you must be real just as well. Right? And because of feeling, it's a funny thing that happens. Immediately, because of your receptions, you reject. And you only reject the unpleasant, they only take the pleasant ones. So you can attach to pleasant things. Ah, this is unpleasant. Take it away from me. I don't want to hear it. Don't, don't, don't tell me about it. 
sweet under the rug for me. Okay? Thought. As soon as data comes in, you grasp them. That's what gives rise to thoughts. If you, if you do not grasp at things that come through your sense organs, you give no rise to thoughts. You buy that? Easier said than done. That's why we need to cross our legs. Formation has a connotation of flowing. What flowing? Thought after thought, unceasingly. Once one thought arises, it keeps on flowing like the waves on the beach. It never stops. This is what makes us up, okay, folks? Think about it, okay? We constantly, our mind is constantly thinking of one thing after another. And number five, consciousness has the connotation of sustaining this, of story as well. The sustaining of life. Because the eighth consciousness contains the three elements of life, meaning breath, warmth, and awareness, consciousness. Okay. This is the fifth one that defines life. Any questions? Yes. How long has the evolution theory been around? A few hundred years. A few hundred years. How long does it cover? How far back does it go? It's just a theory of some oscillations, but now... Um, what is the domain? What's the time frame? Billions of years? How far does it go back? I think 1.5 billions. 5 billion, okay. Do I, do I hear six? Hmm? Eternity. Eternity. That's what Mahayana is. This theory here is very tiny, tiny subset of the, of the picture. That's how I look at it. It's not necessarily incorrect. I'm saying only pointing out to you that it's domain where this theory is valid is only a limited time frame. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is as smart as a human genius can be. Still very limited time frame. In, in, in the Buddha's wisdom, it's beginningless time. And go back, infinite. Can you see that far? No human will ever dare think about it. Okay? Buddhas can see it. So that's my quick and, 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 and dirty answer to your, to your question about I'm only dwelling on the domain of validity. You're a math person, so I'm sticking to the domain thing. That's why the nature, that's why I answer it that way. Mathematics theorem is that you need to define, before you have a theorem, you need to define the domain of validity, right? Okay? These scientists, their domain is too limited, too small. Does that answer your question? 
Okay. What are you still unhappy about? I'm trying to to define you know, the the biologist uh, domain is the living being on Earth. Yeah. It's limited to what's on Earth, what they could define in the, the genes. Okay. They have in the genes, and they could relate how things are related in the tree of life. Um, in Buddhism, it talks about more than Earth. Am I correct? As yes. Earth, other lands, other existence. Yeah, that's why I only gave you one, one, one angle of where, where the, 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 the uh, for the comparison, but it's infinite. If we talk about space, we talk about time, first of all, time, the domain time is too limited. Space, okay? The scientists only see the Milky Way. They have no way of measuring outside our galaxy. And you know, in Mahayana, there are an indescribable number of Buddhas and worlds. So is that the kind of the view of the thing? Kind of, you know, the, the, the view of the scientists, because it's where, where it's more, they only see what they, what they can see. Yeah, it's a subset of the five abilities. The five abilities are even broader than, <laughs> than that. Okay, so an, another aspect of it is that the delineation of living beings. This, the, the Darwinian theory is that you know you uh, survive the fittest, the Darwinian flush, so that the, the, the weak uh, get get weeded out, or the evolution, you know, or, or 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 is it evolution also the Darwinian theory as well? Uh, so you, you evolve from an ape to uh, to to the human human realm. In Mahayana, that's still too limited. It's possible, yes. If you you, you spend enough years, yes. You, know, you go from all four, you go up to 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 walking with with, with, with with the two feet. But in Mahayana, that's too slow. It's one means of evolution. Mahayana, we talk about in terms of coming to being. You can come to being by birth. You can come to being in, in, by, by, by transformation, like the gods. You're born in the heavens by transformation. That's it. You need to wait. Or you can be born by moisture. Okay, so in Mahayana, there's so many more forms of ways of explaining why beings come into beings, living beings come into being. And the uh, evolution theory is simply just too limited. It's childish. Can you ask me? As, as a mathematician, my first reaction is, what is the way of theory? If your domain is too small, I refuse to fool around with you. Does it make sense to you? I'm not going to limit myself. If the world, if, if you only give me a small subset of the world, of the, of, of the, of the reality, then I don't want to hear it. Because you're leaving out so much of the truth. Okay? The important thing about the five skandhas is this. Because of the nature of the five skandhas here, they cover up our true nature. You can't see our true nature. This is what I want you to take away from, from this. We, even though we are inherently have everything, have the Buddha nature, but we can't see it because of these five standards. For example, the Winian theory is the thought skandha, isn't it? Isn't it? That's it. You define a small domain, grasp it. This is this is my world. 
this is the truth, this is the universe. God's gone now. One of the five. In the nature of your confusion. See why I call it childish theory? You see, the, that, that theory is such a small thing compared to the thought skanda itself. The thought skanda is, 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 is so vast, so infinite, that one theory is only one among this, this mess that defines the father wish. Okay, does that must have answered your question. No? I can't tell you anymore. Okay. <laughs> Cross the leg. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? So that brings you back to the 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 the, uh, the, the last stability, the calculability. Okay. Oh, 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 it is life ability as well. I, I forgot. I apologize. Life ability, because you take on a, a, an existence, okay? When we born, okay? You, life begins. Consciousness arises and life begins. Okay? And so, the reception of warmth is a nature, the basic substance of the life ability. And the decline, extinction of life as a mark. You're born, you must die. You you will de- de- deteriorate and die. Okay, and it turns out in a life ability, uh, actually fairly well, fairly well precisely defined. That is, um, that is. Um, The lifespan will not exceed a hundred years. That's our current, our current era. Okay, and uh, in, as far as calculability goes, okay, the kappa, the kappa refers to time. Okay, the time concept, here. and the time concept is only dependent on the other four kinds of confusions. Okay? And the the the, the other four abilities keep on multiplying and therefore giving rise to the notion of time. Change. Time is change. Okay? And it turns out that uh, the manifestation of the capability is that of an unceasing flame. Once you burn, you start a fire, it has to burn itself out. You cannot stop. You cannot stop it. And the fire abilities happen to be in a decreasing kalpa in, in, a, in, a, in a scheme of things. Uh, you go for life uh, span increases up to 84,000 uh, years and then it decreases okay. from 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 uh, 10 to 84 and then goes down to 10 and then goes up to 84 and keeps on increasing and decreasing and it turns out that uh, when the lifespan reaches 20,000 years that's when the, the, the in the decreasing kalpa that's when you have the kalpa capability the are good. Okay, speaking of abilities, still intention, Bodhisattva asked Shakyamuni Buddha why he chose a world of five abilities to become a Buddha. Why didn't he go to a pure land to become a Buddha? And Shakyamuni Buddha said, it's really out of compassion that I chose to go into a impure world to become a Buddha.
When you go to Western Bliss Pure Land, what happens? There is no three evil paths. There is no hells, no animals, no hungry ghosts. Okay? No suffering. Right? And therefore, when you cultivate in Western Bliss Pure Land, what happens? There is no ghost to bother you. None whatsoever. No demon. You can shave your head. No one comes and bother you when you're sleeping. The night before you shave your head. Okay? Because it's no demon. That's why people want to go to West and West Pure Land because cultivation is so much easier. Right? Then why aren't all the Buddha lands pure lands? Why not? Please help me explain that. Different colors. Hmm? Different colors. Let's say radio. Let's say you encounter a Dharma and enables you to become a Buddha. Okay? And, uh, and as a Buddha, you have a choice. When you become a Buddha, you have your own Buddha land. You have a Buddha land that is either pure, like a pure land, or an impure, or defiled, like the Sahara world. What would you choose? The Sahara was more challenging. <laughs> okay, never mind. Next. <laughs> You're not cooperating. <laughs> go to the pure land, Lydia. Thank you. There you go. See, assuming you go to the pure land, because that's a smart choice, yeah. because it's more pleasant, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to be the boss of the gem of the gems, right? right. The best of the best. Why not? Wouldn't you? But my dear, you're not a Buddha yet. That's where that's where you, you come from. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Be it as it may. Be it as it may. Okay, fine. Okay, okay. Okay, let, let, let me try something else. <laughs> I'm going to give you a hard time today, Master. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, the point is that is this is this. The reason that you want the reason that that, that you need both. You want both. For this reason. Why would you... You don't want all pure land. Because it would be too boring. According to her. <laughs> right? You don't want all the fire because it's just too hard. Too challenging. Because sometimes it's just too challenging for you. Don't you think? Sometimes, don't you ever... Didn't that ever happen to you? We say, school division. I forget it. It's just too much for me. Maybe next lifetime. Ever happened to you? Anyone? Yes. Am I the only one in this whole room here? I God, see. you guys are so dishonest. I can't believe it. We are totally <laughs> Okay, so I see three people, including myself. And these three people are honest among ourselves. You guys are so superior, right? Inferior, that's right. So, the point is that, the point is that, it's so hard sometimes, it's just too much. Right? That's why you wish you go to a pure land and say, oh, I like with all these, these, these compassion, all these ghosts and these demons. Right? That's why there are three kinds of Buddha land. Pure Buddha, pure land, or impure land. Or defiled Buddha land. Okay? Why is that? Actually, there are only one kind. Pure land. All Buddhas, Buddha lands are all pure. I've been pulling your legs. Oh gosh, you're good at that. Okay, why is that? <laughs> see, so I guess, see, I knew, I knew this guy's always up to something. <laughs> I know I can't be, I can't trust this guy. <laughs> why is that? This Sama world is also pure. It's only because of our compassion that the Buddha uses spiritual powers to manifest it as inferior. Yes. Why is that? He's a sadist. He's a sadist like it. This is this this picks of pickles are Jake. 
why is that? Let me tell you. Let me give you my 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 interpretation of this. Okay? Because when I see the when I realize that there's so much suffering in the cultivation so hard, the legs hurt too much. Okay? It's so much more than you can take, your body can take. He said, the heck with this. Let me go to the pyramid. Okay? Where I go there, I I I go there and call the bed. One lifetime, I become a Buddha. No more problems. Right? Cool. You want to go to the pure land because you go there, your chances of success are guaranteed, number one. So far, so good. Number two is what? You go there, you become enlightened first. You get rid of your confusion before you can help others. Got that? Right now, if as long you are confused, you try to help others, chances are that you are confusing them with your confusion. I believe that. You think you're healthy? Just like when I was younger, I was taught, oh, I like to help others, I like to help the world. But guess what? When you are confused, how can you help? You're only spreading the confusion. So smart people, cultivators, they say, okay, I know I'm confused right now. Let me get rid of my confusion first before I try to help you. I try to help. This is why we go to a pyramid. They say, I don't know about right now because since I am not, I, I scan the horizon. I pray to the Buddhas. I pray to the Bodhisattvas. No one stepping forward to help me out to teach me. So what do I do? Let me recite the Buddha's name at least I have something to hang on to, something to, to hang my head on when I die. At least I know I go to the pure land. Right? This is why the pure land is such a superior dharma. It is an insurance policy for you, just in case something goes wrong, you will be more in pure land. If something goes wrong this lifetime here, at least next lifetime, you have nothing to worry about. You have, your success is guaranteed. Your confusion will be removed. Okay? This how is do why... How we go there? Hmm? I want to know how we go there. Ah, that's why you practice feeling. That's why you practice feeling. <laughs> this is why the last four years I've been teaching John, because I've been delaying the undelayable. Because eventually, all of you have to ask yourself, what are my chances of being enlightened in this lifetime? <laughs> yeah, right. So what can you do? Buy the insurance policy. Make sure you get to the pure land. As, just in case. Right? This is why the pure land has so many adherents in Asia. This is where the Westerners are so dharma, so inferior compared to Asian dharma, if you ask me. <laughs> the uh, Westerners go for this lifetime, they go for the show, we are, even like the Japanese. You know Japanese, are you? Okay. I'm going to attack the Japanese today. <laughs> the Japanese are the least impressive Asians I can think of. They are so stuck on themselves. Why? The whole culture goes for this lifetime. They go for technology, they go for all those things. They go so, they're so far away from Mahayana. Think of the feudal times when they go around and pick a, pick a, a, a samurai sword and chop you in half and you displease them. That's all it takes. What does it sound like to you? Stupidity. You're creating offenses. You're killing karma. One of the worst kind of karma that you can create. Guess what? Now they come back and now they're still killing each other now in Japan. It's an honor to do stuff. Life is so stressful. It's murderous in Japan. Because there's so much stress. You go to the corporate Japan, it's it's uh, it's uh, the, the big fish eating small fish. Okay, 
Okay, I hope that we will erase this part of Japan because then I lose all my Japanese sponsors <laughs> and advertisers. Okay, never mind. Okay, so let me take it back all the Japanese stuff. Okay, my point to you is that <laughs> is that the Chinese culture is far superior in the sense that they still have all these hooks in the culture. They're still exporting pure land everywhere in the world. That to me is superior thinking. They export to Vietnam, they export to Korea, they export to Japan, they export everywhere else. Even here in this country. We're teaching you pure land, are we not? This is, to me, the best way to help people. Because look around you. There are less than a dozen of you here today in the proper Dharma place. What happened in the rest of the world? We're at the movies. At the movies, at the beach, <laughs> at the ice cream Skinny. parlor. Skinny. Why is that? The only way to help them is to feel that focus. Okay? Only one. You buy that? I'm not referring to anyone very foreign to you. I'm referring to your own family members. I'm referring to your mother, your father, your spouses, your children. You really want to help them? Create conditions for them to be reborn and be a man. That's the best way to help them. You give them money to buy a BMW or a Ferrari. It's only once. If you if you give them those kind of blessings, it's there forever until you use it. You behind that? This is why pure land is far superior as a dharma. This is what this is my personal bias. This is what I feel that the chi the, the, the Chinese culture is far superior for that for that reason. And guess what? Because this is Dharma anyway. Even the Chinese don't even believe in it. Now the Chinese in, in mainland China are turning to the West and Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Google and all those things as, 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 as superior things to pursue. They're losing touch with their own treasure trove. Okay, let me go back to the reason why you want to be born a pure man. So again, number one, number one is that is that no more uncertainty. You go to if you get reborn in pure land, you become a Buddha. You have no more suffering. Okay, number two, number two is that you go to pure land, you cultivate. Okay, it enables you to become to acquire wisdom. To get rid of your confusion. Then you come back to the impure mental health. And that's a good news, folks. This land here has so many ghost bodhisattvas who came from the Western Bliss Pure Land to help us. Can you name one? I name one for you. Would you like to hear that person's name? I don't know her story. Huh? Venables. Venables. Shampoo. Shampoo. That's right. Got that? She butchers my, my, my master's name a little bit. <laughs> I try all the time. I can't say. Yeah, Shrin Huang. Yeah. Shrin Huang. Very good. You, you've become the wiser. Huh? I'm, I'm impressed. Getting there. the ones that lie. Huh? <laughs> you have to pay for that. Okay? So they that if you could if you become enlightened, you become wise, you become you have some kung fu, some skills, some real wisdom, that's when you come back here to help. Okay. That's why you want both kinds of worlds. 
The pure land where you know you go there to acquire wisdom, you be saved. There's no mistake possible. Okay? And then once you have some wisdom, you go back and take care of your prior commitment. Because one of you, some of you have, may have said to, to, to your spouse, that, Honey, I, don't, I will love you forever. I will take care of you. Wherever you go, I go there and I will save you. I will help you. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> huh? Sure, right. I feel so lonely today. Even on Valentine's Day. That's why I feel so lonely. Yes. <laughs> Even on Valentine's Day? What are what are, <laughs> you guys are such chickens. God, take a chance, guys. That's what happens actually. Because what happens is that you make these commitments. In a prior lifetime, you say, honey, I'm in love with you. Okay? And I will always take care of you. And one day, and you, so you, you keep on you, you, you make, you, you keep making those types of promises. You're coming back and you get married and you fight and you and, and you yell at each other and then and, and, and you become so miserable. And one day you encounter a, a good moral advisor and say, you know, there's a better way to do this. <laughs> See, I know you don't have any blessings to become enlightened. I, don't, I know you have not enough blessings to uh, practice Chan right now. How about going to Pure Land for a change? Huh? You go there, you know, and you don't have to fight anymore. You don't have to, you don't have to suffer anymore. And you become enlightened. You come back and then you help her. Then you help him. That's much better. Okay? So... That's what happens to a lot of these bodhisattvas. They come back because some of them may have said to the disciples and said, you know, you bow to me. I know right now I'm nothing yet, but in the future when I have some skills, I will sure to come back and teach you until you become enlightened. And that guy, that woman, may be wise enough and say, okay, let me go to the pure land first. Let me become enlightened first so that I can teach them to be enlightened. And then they go, they go, go to the pure land, they become enlightened, they become higher than Guru Sattva, they come back and they teach us. That's what happened in Master Shri Yes? Isn't that cool? Isn't that good news to me on Valentine's Day? Yes? Yes? Question? What? This, this is a lady who says, I'm not going to speak anymore. <laughs> but now she can't hold your tongue. Never mind, I'm kidding. Yes, what's the question? Is that the same as crossing them over when you come back to help them? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. But crossing, over, crossing them over is really to help them become a light. Ultimately. Helping could be temporary. But helping in a bodhisattva's mind, at least in, according to the standards set by my, my teacher, is that he wants to, us to become enlightened. As quickly as possible. And you know, it turns out that, it turns out that, that, uh, that, uh, that, um, that some of us have been more enlightened already. We just forgot. That's why you need a good known advisor who says, Huh, I am with you again. Okay, questions? What's the reason behind this forgetfulness? Um, In my forgetfulness? Or your forgetfulness? I mean, from lifetime to lifetime that you forget what you did the previous Good question. I thought I skipped it. But she, she caught me. She wouldn't let. She wouldn't let you all. She's like, oh, no. <laughs> <Very dull man. laughs> God, speaking of attachments, so we see how to work on that. <laughs> Lady, you're not alone. Yeah, good. But but she's the, the outspoken one. Uh, the reason being that 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 part of it is because of the nature of birth and death. 
when you want you you confuse. That's why that's why you need you need to go through the process of cultivation of you. Just like the Buddha, when he was born he was confused. Well sort of. Until you become a Buddha, let me let me retract that, okay, because that's incorrect. Because what he did is manifested. He mani- he he pretended to be confused. To be exact. When you become a Buddha, you are no longer confused. Okay? You cannot catch me there, can okay. Once you become a Buddha, it's no more confusion. No matter where you go, no matter what you do. But until you become a Buddha, even Bodhisattvas, when they born, they become confused. And they have to cultivate to remove the confusion. But what turns out is that once you become Enlightenment that sets up a high high water level mark. So every single lifetime you can always reach that again if you encounter a good moral advisor. Pretty easy. Why is that? Hmm? What's the rationale behind that? It's already in your eighth consciousness. It is in your eighth consciousness. Yes, very good. What else? Driven by vows, not by your karma. So much. By vows, yes. What else? I tell you something really, really concrete for you. It's your wealth. Huh? Your will. True wealth. 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 True wealth. Not the money you have right now in your bank account. Not the car you drive. Not the house you live in. It's your wealth is right there forever and ever and ever. Are you talking about the merit and virtue? Yes. Once you become enlightened, it is forever. The wealth is there for you forever. Isn't that exciting? That's true wealth right there. This lifetime, your wealth, you have to earn it. You have to slave for it. You have to sweat for it. Right? That wealth right there is there for you forever. You can access it anyhow. Is not dependent on materialism. On the, it's not as dependent on you as you think. Isn't that cool? This is why we call it because it's permanent. That's how we do that, is by cultivation. That's why you have to decide for yourself. You devote how much energy, how much time in your life doing the mundane thing or cultivation. You have to strike a balance. But the mundane thing is only temporary. It's subject to cause and conditions. The enlightenment is yours for ever. So what are you after? You have to decide for yourself. Okay. So my so my question. So uh, let's say the Buddhist is born, but he's confused. So so he cannot get back to his a consciousness. So that that period of confusion, uh, how what help that that Buddhist are to clear up the confusion? That's what he's referring to the vows. See what happens. This, this is where the finer, the finer, the finer aspects of cultivation is about. The Bodhisattva, after he or she becomes enlightened, okay? No confusion there. But then he or she realizes that the, uh, the prior commitment, they said, okay, I have to go back and take care of my mother. I have to go back and take care of my father. Who would not happen to be, a, happen to be a, 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 a donkey in, in Tibet. Okay? So they go, they go back, they somehow they find a way to be born and create cause conditions for them to go and approach the donkey and help the donkey. Maybe get a black for the rebirth, black for the donkey. That's all you can do. You see? Because of the prior vow that Randy referred to. That they allow themselves, to, 
They create a cause of conditions for themselves, even to be confused, even. You see that, Randy? That's the beauty of Mahayana right there. If he comes back, he may be confused, but as long as he's there to create the cause and conditions to carry out his mission, then he's done. You see that? That's his blessings. Does it make sense to you? What? Well, you have to pay the price if you want to help someone. Right? This Bodhisattva, he made a vow, let me go back, be confused, be stupid, make mistakes. I know when I make mistakes, since I'm not a Buddha yet, I say, have to pay for my mistakes. He's willing to do that so that he can help. That's the, the vow of Paramita. Ever heard it explained like that before, huh, Randy? Okay. Randy, you can't help it. It's automatic. Once you become enlightened, this is the third reason why you want to defile land. See, I've been, I've been kind, of, kind of skipping things, important things, to see who pays attention and who doesn't. The third reason why you want to have a defiled land like a Saha world, in contrast to the Western blissful land, is because a very selfish reason. Right? Very, very selfish. I'll give you an example. If you live your life, RJ, and everything comes to you easy. You want money, that gives you money. You want a car, that gives you a car. You want a, a wife, that marries someone for you and gives you a house and so on. Okay? Right? So far so good, RJ? Beautiful life, isn't it? Perfect. Not the wife's part, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. How about Harem? <laughs> Maybe, uh, wrong way. Whatever. Wrong way? Yeah. <laughs> you and myself. This guy is biased. <laughs> Not even on Valentine's Day? <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Anyways. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Look at that kind of lifestyle. How much merit and virtue do you think you create? In contrast, RJ, suppose that gives you nothing. Suppose that says, whatever money I give you, you owe me. You have to pay me back. And he doesn't seem to be that helpful, to be a, a, a willing to lend a helping hand that often. He makes you earn everything. He makes you work for everything. How much merit and virtue do you think you're creating with your life? Creating? No, you're probably not using up any You're creating so much more merit and virtue for yourself. Got the drip? You go to the pale land. Life is easy, cultivation is easy. Therefore, therefore, the, the rate of creation of blessings for you in the pure land is much slower than in the in defilement. Got that? You see, there's a trade-off. If you want security, then it comes slower. Am I making sense to you? No high risk, high return. Basically. Right? You go to the pure land, no more risk. Therefore, 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 you you for sure you're on you on a, a, a slope. You're gonna keep on increasing, going, making progress until you become a Buddha. But that takes a little bit longer. Whereas 
when you reach the level where you become enlightened, and you say, okay, I think I know what I, I need to do now. I, I remove quite a bit of my confusion now. I have some people here, some prior commitment here. I mean, I made already. So let me combine the two. Let me go back to the defile land, healthy stuff. At the same time, create more blessings for myself that I can bring back to the pure land and speed up my progress. This is why this is why you need both. Got it? But here. Selfishness, right? Selfishness. Smart. That's just being the smart guy. Now do we yeah? Maybe big and door. Thì đại khái là tại vì cái lý do mà tại vì học trò tôi nó hỏi. See, so this is became the third reason why we gave, we gave you two, three reasons, right? And that's the end of the three major reasons why you, you want both kinds of land. Trò tôi nó hỏi tại sao mà tại sao mà tại sao mà có tình độ không có với có bất tình độ, ok? Tại sao mấy mấy người mà mấy người Bồ Tát khi ta thành Phật ta không tạo ra một cái thế một 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 Phật độ là gọi là tịnh độ luôn. Và tịnh độ là không có không có ba ác đạo, không có khổ sở nữa, toàn là lạc không. Hả? Tại sao không tạo cái 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 thế giới như vậy? Tại sao tạo cái cái thế giới bất tịnh là cái gì? Nó học trò rồi nó hỏi như vậy đó, nó hỏi hóc 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 búi như vậy đó. Thì cái trả lời đó, có ba lý do Lý do thứ nhất đó, là tạo vì cái, cái, cái tình độ là mình vào đó mình tu Mình không có ba áp đạo Thành mình không bị ma quỷ nó phá Không bị không bị phá trở ngại trong 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 cái việc tu hành của mình Thành mình thành công, cái sự thành công của việc tu hành mình là chắc chắn rồi Mình sẽ thành Phật Nếu mình sanh và mình vào khỏi tình độ Thì cái kiếp sau đó là mình sẽ thành Phật Ok đó là lý do đầu tiên là mình vào đó một kiếp là thành Phật chắc chắn là mình sẽ thành công còn cái khỏi này là mình cứ sanh đi xong mình cứ luân hồi hoài mình cứ trở lại cả cái nghiệp hoài thành khó cái tu hành khó khăn dễ sợ ok đó là cái do đầu tiên là cái sự thành công nó chắc chắn lý do thứ nhì là tại vì what's the second reason I forgot See, my, my memory is so bad I'm getting too old for this What's the second reason? Huh? Say again. Anyone? Second reason for having the pure land and the, and the impure land. To help come back. Oh, to come back. That's number three. Number two. What's number two? Enlightenment. Hmm? Ah, very. See? I'm so glad you're here today. <laughs> Cái lý do thứ nhì tôi hỏi là tôi nói chuyện giảng xong này giờ nửa tiếng còn lần quên đó Cái lý do thứ nhì là Thế do mình muốn Mình muốn Mình muốn tới quả trình độ Tại mình tới trình độ là mình tu mình sẽ được Giác ngộ Cái giác ngộ là mình có được cái trí huệ Mình có được trí huệ mình giúp được người ta Cái xứ này khi mình muốn giúp người ta Thì là mình hại người ta tại vì sao Tại mình không có, được, không có đủ trí huệ Chẳng hạn như cha mẹ nghĩ là mình giúp con cái mình thiệt ra mình chỉ dạy con cái mình cái sự cái sự hồ đồ của mình thôi đúng không những cái gì mà những những cái lầm lỗi của mình á mình 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 chưa mình chưa sửa mình sẽ truyền lại cho con cái mình cho đời sau tại vì vậy cái người ta khi người ta tu hành thời gian ta hiểu như à thay vì mình giúp người ta để phát tâm bồ đề giúp người ta thì mình đi tới quả trình độ trước mình giác ngộ mình có trí huệ mình đem cái trí huệ nó về mình giúp người ta thì có lý hơn thì mới đó, mới đó mới là thiệt sự giúp người ta thì vì vậy cái lý do cái gì mình có cái quả trình độ là người ta tới trình độ để người ta tới đó ta tu người ta có biết chắc chắn người ta sẽ đạt tới cái trình độ của trí huệ giác ngộ thì có giác ngộ rồi thì giúp mới là có ý nghĩa hơn mới thiệt sự giúp đỡ người ta cái lý do thứ ba là người ta nói là là, là, là trong cái quá khứ mình mình có phát tâm mình đã giúp người ta rồi chẳng hạn như mình mình nhìn người gia đình của mình con cái của mình cha mẹ của mình vợ chồng của mình nói là à xấu khổ quá thôi 
tôi tôi không nghĩ rằng đó là tôi sẽ dùng hết sức của tôi để tôi giúp ông giúp bà giúp anh giúp em giúp chị giúp cha giúp mẹ ok thành ra một khi mình có được cái trí huệ rồi đó, thì nhớ lại những cái lời nguy hiểm đó mình mới phát tâm mình trở lại giúp ok mình hoàn thành những cái cái, cái lời nguyện đó mà lý do chính nữa là tại sao mình có cái mình trở lại quả 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 bất tình mà tại như vậy này tại vì cái quả tịnh độ mặc dù nó nó, nó 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 an toàn thiệt nhưng điều cái sự cái sự cái cái cái, cái sự mà tiến bộ nó chậm hơn tại sao vậy tại vì nó ít cái sự nguy hiểm đúng không tại nhiên nếu như mà nhưng trong tâm trong, trong bên cái cái về 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 tài chánh tôi nói nếu như mà mình cái, cái càng càng risky chừng nào càng risky chuyện gì thì càng khó chừng nào thì cái, cái, cái công đức nó càng lớn hơn đúng không nếu mà tu hành ở tịnh độ nó dễ hơn thì công đức của tu hành nó ít hơn còn về về quả bất tịnh đó mặc dù nó khó hơn tu hành nó khó hơn nhưng cái công đức mình tạo ra nó lớn hơn nhiều thành bởi vậy mình dùng hai cái thế là mình tới quả tịnh độ trước để mình giác ngộ để khi mình vào quả ta bà này cái quả bất tình lên lại mình nếu mà đạt lại cái trình độ giác ngộ mình rồi á mình có được trí hệ rồi thì mình tạo thêm công đức của mình nó cần lớn hơn mình tạo là quả trình độ thế lý do chính quan trọng hơn thành một khi những cái bồ tát người ta mà qua qua cái trình độ rồi ta đạt cái trình độ người ta được giác ngộ rồi thì ta muốn trở lại cái quả bất tình để ta tạo công đức tôi sắp cái lui tới hoặc cái lui tới để ta tạo công đức để ta tu để tự dành qua qua quả ta bà tạo công đức và xong trở lại quả trình độ để tu tiếp đi lui tới cái đó là ba lý do tại sao có quả trình độ quả bất tình nhỏ đá mình là fascinating see my yang is very very flexible it, it is it is so malleable it, it can it can accommodate all your needs. You don't need to go anywhere else, my dear. I have everything right here. The door, my father, 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 my Okay, any final question? It's 3.30 now. Uh, we at we at the end of the section here and we beginning the new section where now the Buddha begins to emit light. Okay? And I explain that in the in in, 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 the, in the next uh, the next time. Okay? Any final questions? Uh, you know, cái phần khác là cái phần bắt đầu là uh, cái giảng tôi, tôi, chúng tôi đang giảng kinh uh, địa tạng địa tạng là một cái kinh uh, đại thừa mà giảng thời thời uh, thời uh, thời cuối cùng của Phật thời cái thời thời uh, uh, diệu pháp đó. thời pháp hoa đó thành ra những những cái những cái những cái um, những cái um, Principal tiếng Việt cái gì? Hả? Những 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 cái những cái uh, chân lý này, những cái lý gì á? Những cái những cái lý này á là cái 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 lý của uh, rất 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 là rất là uh, rất là cao cao siêu. Thì ra khi mình người ta người thường nhìn cái kinh địa tài này, người ta tưởng cái kinh này rất 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 là giản gì? thì ra trong những cái kinh trong những cái những cái lời kinh giảng gì nó có uh, uh, hàm nó có nó có chứa đựng rất nhiều rất nhiều cái những cái, cái lý thuyết rất rất rất, rất là cao thành thành chúng tôi uh, năm nay đang giảng cái kinh này uh, vì lý do đó. So I was telling them that 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 uh, the Earth Star Sutra is explained in the Dharma Flower period where because of that that should tell you right away that the principles contained are very very high very profound and yet when you look at this earth source sutra it contains very 
on the surface, very, very simplistic, very uh, pragmatic. Sometimes it's considered to be a manual for Mahayana because it contains so many really easy recipes for you to follow. But if you dig deeper, a little bit deeper, it really a very profound principle. Okay? I thank Mark you help. Any any final questions? Again, I apologize for for running over time. I <laughs> I know you're busy. Uh, you've been here since the morning and for you to stay here this late, I really appreciate it. Okay? So next week next week um, we we'll continue again. Uh, uh, explaining uh, uh, this thing. Uh, xin lỗi quý vị là bây giờ uh, uh, cái, cái, tôi sẽ bắt đầu chấm uh, chấm chấm dứt cái cái cái, cái buổi giảng này giảng từ hồi một giờ tới bây giờ luôn. Nên xin lỗi nha, xin lỗi uh, là phải phải chấm dứt. Uh, uh, nếu mà rảnh thì mời quý vị tuần sau trở lại giảng uh, giảng kinh này, uh, kinh uh, giảng kinh địa tạng buổi sáng thì có thì có thì có uh, niệm phật rồi sau là nói pháp nửa tiếng đồng hồ thì từ nửa tiếng bốn mươi lăm tiếng đồng hồ khi nào cũng đi trễ hết còn buổi chiều thì có giả kinh à, xin mời quý vị tới tới, tới tham dự cho hồi nãy xin lỗi nha xin lỗi mình phải trễ rồi à, họ tồi lắm họ họ sáng từ họ sáng từ bốn giờ bây giờ thành là phải cho họ về I know I I I I spoke Vietnamese to tell them that I um, I uh, I have to end here because I know I'm I'm really pushing it. Uh, and, uh, you've been very patient. I appreciate it. And we're gonna end here by uh, doing the transfers. All right. Thank you.